Once you live by water, it's hard not to live by water. And it's, it's just a beautiful place to live. It really is. Stacy Erholtz grew up in Minnesota Lake Country. She met her husband at the lake resort where she worked. They purchased land nearby, had three children, and settled into life. Around that same time, at Mayo Clinic, Dr. Stephen Russell had a goal. You know, my life stream has been to get to the point where I've developed a virus that can actually impact cancer. After 17 years of research, he and his team created a clinical trial to determine if the measles virus could fight cancer and win. To complete the trial, Dr. Russell needed funding. Enter Al and Mary Agnes McQuinn. I wanted to, to really make a meaningful uh, contribution. I gained a lot of confidence in him and I thought to myself, it is a very worthy thing to do. And so began their relationship. Over the next 10 years, Dr. Russell frequently updated the McQuins on the research progress. Meanwhile, Stacy, her children now teenagers, was going through a journey of her own. Stacy had been fighting multiple myeloma, a blood cancer, for 10 years. I was exhausted. She had multiple tumors throughout her body. On the scans. I just lit up like a Christmas tree. One tumor her children even named. Evan was the name, right here, golf ball size. Uh, tumor on my forehead. Stacy's medical team treated her with a number of therapies. I had done two stem cell transplants and multiple forms of oral and infused chemotherapy. Each beat back the cancer for a while, but it always returned. The silver lining of these medical setbacks was that Stacy now qualified for Dr. Russell's landmark clinical trial, the same study supported by the McQuins. She received a large injection of the cancer-fighting measles virus, enough, in fact, to vaccinate 10 million people. Remember Evan, the tumor her children had named? 36 hours, Evan was gone. Seven weeks after therapy, all her tumors and any signs of cancer were gone. Stacy is the first. I mean, she's, she represents a very important historic landmark in medicine. When Stacy, simply known as patient 11.2, had a remarkable response, the McQuins were some of the first to know. I told them about patient 11.2, and they were so excited. I was probably more excited than anyone could be, but you know, they, I could feel it. The story could end here, creating a milestone in cancer treatment, forever changing Stacy's life. But then something happened that science can't explain. Four months after her infusion, Dr. Russell invited Stacy to tour his lab. They took a picture next to the plaque honoring the benefactors who helped fund his research for the last 10 years. And the photo was about to be taken, and Stacy looked at the plaque. And I said, I know these people. And I just couldn't believe that. I believe I had to talk Dr. Russell into believing me that I, that, that I knew the McQuins. It turns out this isn't the first time that Stacy and the McQuins have crossed paths. Al and Mary Agnes McQuinn own a lake home just up the shore from the resort where Stacy worked for so many years. Stacy even knew their son, Charles. I came home from errands and there's a message on my phone. And uh, the young lady said, uh, Mr. and Mrs. McQuinn, I'd love to visit with you. Uh, I am Dr. Russell's patient. Stacy Earholtz, 11.2. <laughs> and I just sucked in my breath. Al was at the office and I called him up and I said, you have to come home, I can't tell you this over the phone. <laughs> Stacy and the McQuins met for brunch and chatted for hours at the very resort where their daily lives had intersected. The circle now complete, a new shared story has begun with the research team, Stacy and the McQuins giving generously in their own ways, their careers, talents, dollars, and courage, providing hope and healing for cancer patients everywhere. It is a, a, an extraordinary adventure, my dear. <laughs> it's a great adventure.